ladies and gentlemen, this man, I like what the term they use there. He's a serial social entrepreneur. Shows he used to go everywhere, he used to see things. This man is an innovation consultant, a service designer, and a learning scientist and startup coach. He's a Bitcoin rationalist, and he is the program director for Bitrust. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we bring up on stage Mr. Femi Longe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm just waiting for my slides. Um, and thanks for the introduction, Paul. Um, it's great to be here. Last year was my first ever Bitcoin conference. Um, and today I want to talk about and bring very quickly some elephants in the room to the fore so that they don't influence our engagement over the next um, three days. Quick introduction, or to add to the introduction before while the work on the slide. My name is Femi Longe. I run a program that is training African software engineers to help them manage the transition to become Bitcoin engineers and to increase our contribution to Bitcoin open source. We have a critical mass of Bitcoin engineers in Africa. A lot of them are in this room because over the last two days, we've actually been meeting before the meeting. So when you run into them in the, in the halls, they may introduce themselves as Bitcoin engineers. Actually, any Bitrust builder in the house, can you guys just raise your hands or stand, let the world see you? Our goal is to make sure the African voice is represented in Bitcoin. And that Africa and Africans engage with Bitcoin in a different way from how we have engaged with previous waves of technology. This time, we don't want to be consumers. We don't want stuff to be created in the West and then we buy in Africa. We want to engage this technology as producers. We want to understand the nitty gritty of it because we know, and it's what I'm going to talk about today, that Bitcoin needs Africa. Bitcoin <laughs> needs Africa. Are my slides ready? While I wait for my slides, so what I'm going to talk about today is narratives. And I think narratives, it's important that we, we bring it up because in many ways it's going to it's going to shape and it's going to influence the interactions we're going to have over the next three days. The Africans in the room who may not know, but they are running a program in their mind around who they are and who we are as a people, as a continent. Some of it, a lot of it, not their choice. It's the world that we've grown in. And likewise, the people in the room who are visiting Africa for the first time or who are back in Africa, who may come with some perspective and perception about Africa. And I want us quickly to actually put those on the table so that we're conscious that they're there. And when we interact over the next three days, we make sure that we can properly calibrate our interactions. The base, the heart of that interaction unfortunately, is that perception, that culture that we have created in the world, where Africa is the only continent, or is the one continent where everybody feels they have to help. I lived in the UK. My worst day as a resident in, in UK is the day they call Comic Relief Red Nose Day. For anyone who's lived in the UK or who is familiar with it, it's a whole day celebration of poverty porn on TV, using the faces of Africans, people like me, to raise money, allegedly for charity. But nothing diminishes your self-respect, your self-esteem, your dignity, like being treated like a receiver, like the eternal person that everybody helps. That's not us. That's not who we are. 
Unfortunately, we have internalized that perspective too as Africans. We automatically assume if someone is coming from the West, then they're probably rich. Or if they're coming from the West, they're probably smarter than me. Which is not the case. And I've seen in the almost two years now that I've been an active participant in the Bitcoin ecosystem, I have seen traces of that narrative seep into our engagement with the African Bitcoin ecosystem. I've seen it in the way African Bitcoiners shape our engagement with people from the West and how at times there's this paternalistic relationship between companies and organizations and people in the West with Africa. Yes, Bitcoin's been around for 14 years. Only last year did we have our very first African Bitcoin conference. But I think this second one is an opportunity for us as Africans to be conscious that actually Bitcoin needs us more than we need Bitcoin. And if we are going to maximize our engagement in the conference and get, uh, maximize our engagement in this Bitcoin space, we have to start from a realization that Bitcoin needs us. So if there's one question that I, I'd love to see us continuously repeat through the next three days of this conference is what does Africa bring to Bitcoin? What does Africa bring to Bitcoin? What I've seen, and the problem I think Bitcoin has, we, we all know about the block size wars. Small blockers, big blockers. We're going through another philosophical war in Bitcoin right now. It's the Bitcoin as a store of value versus Bitcoin as a currency war. You may not be conscious of it, but it's actively happening in the Bitcoin space. And at the moment, Bitcoin as a store of value is winning the argument. Well, not winning the argument, it's the louder voices. And it's the louder voices because for Western Bitcoiners, majority of you live in countries where you don't really have fundamental currency challenges. And so for you, the problems that Bitcoin solves are not your lived reality. And so, what majority have now taken Bitcoin just to be is digital gold. I put my money in it, the price goes up, I clean out. It's stack sats and huddle to the moon. Imagine if money, currency was limited purely to you only can use it to buy stock and sell. Of what value is that money? We have the problems that Bitcoin addresses. We have loads of them. We have corrupt governments. We have dictators. We have, I say Nigeria, and I'm Nigerian. Our money has the same problem we have as individuals. It's extremely hard for a Nigerian to visit other countries. The amount of First, you're thinking about where, am I, where is, do I even, can I get the visa? How much am I going to pay for it? Are they even going to give me with all the documents they're going to ask me? Our money is going through that same experience. Internal settlement within Nigeria is brilliant. If I send money to a different bank, the person gets it instantly. My money has a problem because once it gets to the border of Nigeria and it has to go anywhere else outside Nigeria, then it also needs a visa. And that's the problem. And that's the problem that Bitcoin solves. Well, human beings using Bitcoin solve that problem. We are the ones that have the utility challenges that Bitcoin can address. We are the ones that can show the world the use case, the business case for Bitcoin. There are things that are in our reality, as our lived reality, that designers in the West cannot even imagine. Um, KG is in the room. Machankura created a means to transact Bitcoin. It means, it means to transact Bitcoin on a phone that doesn't have internet. It's out of the lived reality of a designer in Silicon Valley that there are people in this world who have phones that don't have internet. 
who have phones that don't have browsers. A, a whole lot of them have no clue what USSD technology is. We have it. We have the problems. We understand the context of the problems. We are the ones that can build the solutions to those problems. But if we come to Bitcoin with the same way we've approached every engagement with the world, like the guys that people are going to help, we will miss the opportunity to actually claim our place in the Bitcoin ecosystem. We are the ones that can show the utility of Bitcoin. First, and, and here's, my, here's my controversial stand, and I know there are lots of Bitcoin education getters in the room. You might fight me later. But personally, I believe utility skills Bitcoin, not education, or at least not user education. People will use Bitcoin if it solves a fundamental problem that they have. Nigeria is top 10 in Bitcoin crypto adoption. 80% of the money that, that makes it so comes from people who don't even have a Bitcoin wallet or a crypto wallet. There are Nigerian importers who need to get money to China to import a container. And if they can't get that money there tomorrow, they're going to lose a whole lot of money. So they go to local exchanges, give them their fiat, and through a network of peer-to-peer, -peer, that fiat is converted to Bitcoin, is sent to another person in China in the network who converts it back to US dollars or yuan and gets it to that person the next day because the banking system cannot do it. Those guys are using Bitcoin, but they don't know all the things, the censorship resistant, the, all the things we feel people have to know before they can use the technology. I parallel it to mobile apps. I worked with startups in Nigeria, growing the startup ecosystem at the dawn of mobile apps. If you ask my elderly mom if she has a mobile app, she will tell you no. If you ask her if she has WhatsApp, she'll say yes. Because when she wants to speak to her grandchildren, she whips out WhatsApp and she calls. Imagine if, in trying to onboard her, you had to take her through education to understand the iOS ecosystem and the Android ecosystem, and this is how the details of it work. She doesn't need to know it. I don't say education is not important. I'm involved in education. I'm, but I'm educating people who are building the utility applications that will bring the next billion in Africa into Bitcoin even if they don't know that they're using Bitcoin. But there are other classes in our society that we need to engage. Startup founders, fintechs, who already have built infrastructure, who already have a critical mass of users. How do we get them using this technology as the backbone for the services that they're building? The other thing which we don't do well, which is the other reason why the store of value side is winning the argument, is unfortunately we don't tell our stories. And I'm as guilty of this as most Bitcoiners in the room. You want to orange pill someone, you tell them to go and read the Bitcoin Standard or one of the many books about Bitcoin that are written by people in the West who come from a different value system and worldview from people here. Why are we not writing? Why are we not telling our story? Why are we not showing the use cases of Bitcoin to solve, to transform people's lives? Money is a product. Money is a tool. Bitcoin is a tool. It's not a religion. I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. I'm Bitcoin only, but I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. Because I find a lot of them to be religious, not jobs. Money is a tool. But money is a profound tool. Because it's the one tool that almost everybody in this planet, at one point in the day, touches. From when they wake up in the morning to when they go to bed. Every single one of those touch points is an opportunity for, for Bitcoin to be an option that they can use. But you need to build, someone needs to build the products. You wake up in the morning, you want to get your coffee, can you pay with Bitcoin? 
You get in the cab to get to work. Can you pay with Bitcoin? You see something you like, you want. Can you pay with Bitcoin? That is the utility layer of Bitcoin. And the solution to that utility layer is on this continent. Not just software developers, because the software developer alone is not enough to build a company. You need product managers, you need marketers, you need business development people. You need a whole ecosystem of people that are building solutions. But at the same time, you also need Africans who understand and who are in the conversations at Bitcoin Core, at LDK, where the protocol is being designed to make sure the decisions, the design decisions at that level take into consideration the technology reality of our people. Because Bitcoin also needs to solve because we need to make sure the design decisions that are made in the evolution of the technology takes into consideration our own lived reality, but also takes into consideration the human beings in our continent. Part of the problems with Bitcoin scaling is that Bitcoin has a fundamental user experience problem. Bitcoin addresses a bad UX, all those many lines. Lightning addresses are bad UX. Yes, do we want to sacrifice security for user experience? But if we're thinking of this as currency that real human beings are going to use, then we need to put how human beings consume solutions in mind when we're building this, this, these things. My people, my African developers are going to be in those rooms and they're going to be pushing those things. Because we are not in Bitcoin as receivers, we're not in Bitcoin as takers. We're in Bitcoin to give to Bitcoin. We're gonna to give to Bitcoin, but we're also conscious that Bitcoin also has to give to our people and our continent. And it has to give by helping them improve their quality of lives. So as we go into the next two days, and I've done the whole presentation without the slides. As we go into the next two days, It's going to be extremely important that every African in the room, in your engagement together, in your engagement with people from other places, that you do not go into those engagements with a victim mindset. That you not, do not go into those engagements as if you want to learn from them, but they have nothing to learn from you. And similarly, for everyone who's, who's visiting this continent, Please, open up your mind and maximize your curiosity. We have things to teach. We have things to teach. And lastly, for everyone in, in this room that's an African, that's working in this space, let's start telling our story. Let's start sharing. Let's write books. Let's contribute to the conversation, because if we don't, our voices get drowned, what we, the value we have gets drowned, and people see us as, just like in every other sphere, takers, people you give to, diminishing the value that we're bringing to this technology. If I leave you with anything for, in it, for this next three days, it will be this. Let's go into this understanding that the narrative of Africa is different in this space. Bitcoin is a reset button, and we have pressed reset. Thank you very much.